What's going on guys? Geo Snow right here. So in today's video, I want to clarify a little bit what happens with this, you know, exploit and um, how it might be used to generate a new jailbreak that is actually much more stable for the iOS 10.3.1 on the iPhone 7. But also we're going to discuss about whether we should stay on 10.2.1 or on 10.3.1 uh, because new information has been released by Liquidesco and therefore we can make a bigger picture of it. Uh, and by a bigger picture, I want to say a complete mix because uh, there are no mixed opinions and we should get into that. So I'm going to start with, um, look at this guy's uh, tweet in here, made five or six hours ago. And he says, quote, uh, additionally, the new iOS 10.3.1 bugs may be used as a replacement for Mac portal for people on iPhone 7 10.1.1. Now, what he says in here is that the, um, the exploit that might be released by Adam Donenfield can be uh, probably used in order to, you know, improve the Mac portal for people running on iPhone 7, on Tempo 1.1. And he doesn't talk about this jailbreak in here, he talks about what is on the lower end, Yalu Plus Mac Portal, which you probably know it's very unstable, doesn't have the substrate enabled by default, has a lot of problems, drains the battery faster and um, crashes the device pretty often and, stu and stuff like that. Now the Beta 4 should have fixed a lot of this, um, this issues, but unfortunately beta, beta 4 is broken and therefore you're forced to use Beta 3, which doesn't contain anything in here. So uh, definitely a good uh, good news for the uh, iPhone 7 users. So as I said in my previous video I made yesterday, do not update from 10.1.1 if you're on iPhone 7. Also, you should probably not update from 10.2 either if you're on iPhone 7, as you, ha you have more chances in there. Also, um, the exploit that is going to be released in the summer by Adam Donenfield is going to also be supporting iPhone 7 on iOS 10.2. This is confirmed by Adam himself. Moving swiftly on, we have another uh, tweet. He had a couple of tweets today. And uh, this one says, quote, this is not to say that anything will happen for 10.3.1. It likely won't. I doubt anyone is willing to burn kernel protection bypasses. Well, by kernel protection bypasses, he means the KPP, the infamous KPP or kernel patch protection, which is a mechanism that makes sure you do not actually modify the kernel itself. You do not modify the kernel, you do not patch it. And um, of course a jailbreak has to patch the kernel at some point and KPP would definitely detect that and panic the device. That would of course result in a, in a uh, re reboot and you're not able of course to jailbreak or to continue exploiting the device. The KPP itself is not enforced by the kernel so you cannot actually patch it, you cannot disable it. Unfortunately it stays on and you have to bypass it. So it has to remain on, but it has to, made, to be made somehow not to detect your modifications, which is definitely not something easy. And uh, that's why Look at Desco in here says that um, he, he doubts somebody is willing to burn such uh, bypasses. Well, the KPP itself, um, it was a very long time believed it's, um, it's been enforced by SAP or SEP, which is in fact not. It is actually enforced by the, um, the ARM trust zone and it's only available on 64-bit devices starting from iOS 9. So 32-bit devices do not have this KPP at all. Anyways, this is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, he, uh, he means in here that he doesn't think anyone will release a 10.3.1 jailbreak. Well, we do have Pangu that already demoed a 10.3 to 10.3.1 jailbreak, which uh, apparently has KPP bypassed. Either way, it wouldn't work. So it's definitely something interesting going on in here. And the last tweet that he, he has posted that is actually uh, meaningful for this situation is this one. Quote, additionally, I think the iOS 10.2 KPP or kernel patch protection bypass works on 10.2.1 since it was released shortly after. So between 10.3.1 and 10.2.1, stay on 10.2.1. Now, he says this uh, in here, but there's a problem. He is not 100% sure that the KPP bypass works on 10.2.1. He said, I think, which I think can easily mean doesn't work. Now the problem in here is that uh, he published this message for some reason very very late. I mean going on in here on the iPhone wiki and moving swiftly on to 10.2.1 we can easily see that it was released in January on uh, 23. Now this is five months ago. In this five months he never said something about KPP working. Well that's not uh, definitely a problem but now it makes you have a tough decision to take. Should you stay on 10.2.1 or stay on 10.3.1? Now, 
Half of the community now says 10.3.1 because you have Pangu's jailbreak that was demoed and we know that 10.3.1 is definitely 100% jailbreakable, only that the jailbreak is not public, but that doesn't mean the firmware is not jailbreakable. But at the same time, you have, uh, you have the exploit that is going to be published in August by Adam Donenfield, which is compatible with 10.3.1 and 10.2. He didn't say anything about 10.3 or 10.2.1, which definitely um, doesn't make sense, but he didn't, so we assume it's not compatible. At the same time, uh, if you're staying on 10.2.1 and uh, the KPP bypass does work, it's proven to work on 10.2.1 uh, as well, then somebody would have to create a jailbreak around it. Who is going to do that? I mean, okay, you have the KPP bypass but you do not have the exploits, as the exploits from 10.2 were definitely patched in 10.2.1. And to be honest, in my opinion, I do not think that Apple slipped exactly the KPP bypass and left it unpatched in 10.2.1. That would be pretty dumb from Apple's side. And uh, considering the fact that KPP bypasses are very important, very rare, very hard to achieve, I, I really do not think that they patched all the other exploits in 10.2 jailbreak, but they left behind exactly the KPP bypass so that it works on 10.2.1. Because iOS 10.2.1 came to actually fix and of course patch the iOS 10.2 uh, jailbreak. And of course other things, but it did patch the uh, the jailbreak exploits. So definitely I do not think this uh, works, but if look at the Desco actually tests this, then it would be a very interesting thing if he can do so. I do not know if he can actually test this. Anyways, the problem in here is that if you stay on 10.2.1, you will not you're not going to be able to use the 10.3.1 exploit unless it's proven to work on 10.2.1. Adam Donanfield didn't say anything about this. So you're not going to be able to downgrade in the summer to anything, for example, 10.2.1 if you have the blobs. At the same time, if you're staying on 10.2.1, somebody has to build an, a, a jailbreak for 10.2.1 around the KPP bypass from Luca Desco. Who is going to do that? Because Luca Desco said himself he is no longer doing public jailbreaks. And I really don't think that he, he is going to change his mind anytime soon. So who is going to do it? Pangu? I really doubt. They might as well use iOS 10.3.1 exploit to build a jailbreak around that. I don't think KPP is a problem for them, considering the fact that they already have a 10.3.1 jailbreak, which presumably has a KPP already bypassed. Either way, it wouldn't work. So it's a very, very strange situation in here. You can no longer tell where you should stay on uh, iOS 10.3.1 or 10.2.1 and so on. If you're on iOS 10.2 or 10.1.1, definitely do not update. I got a couple of uh, tweets to me from some people that were willing to update from 10.2 and 10.1.1 to 10.3.1 because uh, the jailbreak apparently wasn't stable and it drained the battery. Now, you gotta be you gotta be very, very, very sick to do that. I mean, do not update from 10.1.1 and 10.2 to anything. Stay there, you're jailbroken, you're out of this complete mess, you're out of this complete drama with updates, downgrades, and so on. Stay there, you're safe there. If you're on 10.2.1, I definitely have no idea what to tell you. In my opinion, you should update. I, I did update and I took the risk for 10.3.1. If you don't, do not update. You can definitely go ahead and, um, of course, follow Luca's advice, which might be correct. I definitely give that to him. The KPP bypass might work on 10.2.1. He has probably uh, yet to test it, but anyways, it's definitely a possibility now. Yesterday it wasn't, nobody knew yesterday that this might be a possibility, but now it is. So definitely stay in there if you can or if you want, but at the same time you won't be able to use what iOS 10.3.1 has, in this, in this case is the um, exploit that might allow downgrades. It's a very strange situation right now, it's very good for the iPhone 7 users though, but for the other uh, users, it's pretty damn hard to tell. So, in my opinion, you should definitely put them, you know, you should balance them to see which is better. I'm not going to tell you go ahead and update 10.3.1 now, because it's definitely uh, more to it. I mean, now that Look at Desco posted this, even though a little bit late, um, we need to to have a decision that is actually thought before we do it. Now, we know that iOS 10.2.1 might of course have the KPP bypass, but who the hell is going to build a jailbreak around it? Anyways, 10.3.1 already has a jailbreak that is not published by Pangu. They might publish it or not. 
We do not know. At the same time, 10.3.1 has a bug, sorry, an exploit that will be published in the summer that will allow, of course, downgrades if you have the SH SH2 blobs. So you can go back to the 10.2. Uh, it's very hard to tell where you should stay. Anyways, this is basically it, guys. Do your decision. Think twice before doing it. If you already updated the 10.3.1, you're not doomed. Keep that in mind. You're not doomed if you're on 10.3.1. You're okay, but do not update to 10.3.2. If you're on 10.3.1, you still have possibilities. You have a very powerful exploit that's going to be um, released that allows downgrades, and somebody might also release a jailbreak around it. And at the same time, you have the jailbreak developed by Pangu that might get released. If you're on 10.2.1, stay there for the moment, follow Lucas' advice, and um, we're going to see what happens, but keep that in mind, iOS 10.3.1 is not going to stay signed for too long. Apple is definitely going to fiddle with the signature status, probably this week, because this is what they do in general, and following their old habits on unsigning firmwares, I think that some, somewhere this week, maybe at late next week, they're going to get iOS 10.3.1 unsigned, especially with all these exploits and KPP bypasses and releases and so on lurking around. They do not want to give anybody the opportunity to, you know, stay on a safe firmware for jailbreak. So they're going to definitely kill it very soon. Keep that in mind. If you make your decision, make it, of course, with a lot of thoughts behind, but do not forget, do not make it too late. This is actually it, guys. I'm Geosnow. If you have any questions that I, I might be able to answer, drop them down below. Till the next time, peace out.